Chief Deputy Josh Taylor. Josh, thank you for coming on the program. Good morning, AJ. Thank you for having us and also for those tuning in this morning to listen to us. So, uh, we're excited to carry on Cop Talk into a, a new year and a new decade, our first show of the new year. So, Josh, uh, what's new at the Sheriff's Department? Uh, currently, we just uh, had some meetings last week where they finalized the contract for the engineering firm to finally move forward with the building of the jail now we're sitting there and uh, laying out the meeting with the engineers and architects trying to lay out the plans dimensions the needs the wants um, trying to put all those together and formulate the plan to move forward certainly uh, obviously I guess since this is the first show of the year we'll kind of do a quick recap it was back in 2017 the state sent a letter to the county uh, detailing some grievances with the jail and uh, so we've been working since that point to reach to this point to construct a new jail correct with our uh, current facility it's set for a low 100 uh, bed population state recommends that you run at a 90 percent capacity uh, unfortunately we're getting closer to a 190 capacity uh, instead of the lower than the 100 percent capacity so it's uh, we're having a lot of different issues and formulating the plans of getting the individuals to and from court housing them in other out-of-county facilities transporting them back and uh, we're dealing with those our jail staff and our uh, merit deputy staff are dealing with and uh, handling these appropriately and we're doing some of the stuff on the fly trying to find and formulate plans for a problem that we didn't anticipate or expect um, five ten years ago when they went and redid everything as far as the criminal justice code um, putting the level sixes at local facilities the increase in opioids and methamphetamines and drug and recidivism with the cases here certainly um, you know when we talk about the situation in the jail it is a safety issue not only for the inmates um, being in a close quarters but like you said it's a safety issue for uh, the folks that are working at the jail as well yes it is uh, with that I mean you can think of these individuals their freedoms been restricted they're inside a close confined uh, for months days years at a time uh, so while they're sitting in there it takes away some of their personal liberties and freedoms I mean they're you do the crime <laughs> you got to do the time aspect of it but there's no reason for it to be unreasonable or unnecessary for the punishment inside there or substandard living conditions i know we had the the kickoff meeting was this past thursday um at that meeting they laid out you know plans for the rest of the design phase you know then going out for bidding and all that i think we're looking at um targeting having the project out for bid this November and then construction uh, middle of June, uh, middle of 2022. Yes, I was going to say May, June is when they were talking about being able to turn it over to us in 2022. And with that date, it's there, it'll come quick, but it seems so far away. And for with everything that we deal with every day is the hurdles, um, 2022 can't get here quick enough now. Right, no, I'm sure. But, and then at the same time, you know, it is. It's a project. It's a big project, and obviously, it's a significant one for our county. So, you have to you know determine what all you want in this facility, anything else that you want added, learn from you know what did work with this one, and all that. A lot of conversations are still being had to make sure that when this gets built, it's built the right way. Correct. I mean, we're not trying to sit here and make it a dream palace. It's the simple fact of what do we need now to meet our needs what right. will we need in five years ten years and potentially twenty years uh, down the road because we don't want to get into a situation where we make decisions now and it's directly impacting us in fifteen to twenty years down the line somebody else will have to be uh, handling those and our decisions that we make today it's going to be a long time uh, that they're going to have an impact on it. So we're trying to make the right decisions for right now and the future. And uh, information on the jail project is available on the county website for folks that if you haven't made it to one of those meetings or you want to learn a bit more about what the plan stands at this time. That's correct. Uh, they're making sure that it's public access information so individuals they have the meetings but also putting it on a online platform for those that can attend the meetings uh, to do that so everybody has access or a fair input into it at that point. Uh, Sheriff, thank you very much for uh, coming by this morning. I appreciate it. Sorry I'm a little bit late. Oh, that's all right. Uh, 
one thing I'd like to bring up that's occurred in the last month is our situations with the schools. Uh, we just recently have met with both school superintendents uh, to talk about uh, our mutual agreement of understanding with the schools as they operate under our wing for their law enforcement uh, authority. Uh, what's new is, is we've now brought in Southwestern High School as a, a part of our SOR program uh, and uh, just again signing mutual agreements to make our kids safe and uh, you know everything that's important to this community. Right. And, we, and we talk about how important the school resource officer program is, not only you know for the safety of the students, but also for you know introducing kids to law enforcement in a positive light. Yeah, and, and, and an important thing is uh, we'd like to thank uh, Canaan Academy and uh, Shaw. Yeah, this month they have had a respect for law program at both their schools, and uh, uh, we've been able to interact with the students and. Uh, sit down and have lunch with them and talk to them uh, just about uh, who we are as police officers and what we're here for and how in fact we are their friend and if they need anything they can come to an officer any department uh, something very important to us and you know like I said it, it's something we want to give the community uh, and again it's just a safety factor certainly we definitely like to see those programs and see that uh respect for law for law enforcement develop um, I know as we're also talking about the sheriff's department um, the last time we had you guys on the program in December we were talking about getting ready for some new hires at the sheriff's department and uh, those hires were made yes uh, Laura pickle and Jeff Wheeler have joined our agency in the first part of January with us uh, we've put them through the basic pre basic class uh, 40 hours of uh, law enforcement training skill sets aspect to allow them to operate as a law enforcement officer prior to going to the academy um, Laura brings uh, over a decade of experience with San Diego PD as an officer there uh, Jeff is uh, new to law enforcement but he's been in public service with volunteer fire service at a couple of different uh, fire agencies so he has an understanding and a desire to help the community and he's got I think 14 or 15 years in uh, public safety that way. Currently we also have uh, other two additional jobs uh, within our agency. For Merit Deputy we have a current process that's open until January 31st at 4 p.m. Applications can be picked up at the Sheriff's Department or they can go and email us and request a uh, application to be sent to them so they can go and get it filled out and submitted by Friday afternoon at 4 p.m. Definitely exciting to see uh, new hires made and definitely um, bringing in um, some people with some nice experience. That is that's a big plus. Yeah, we, we've we also have a captain's position that's come open uh, since our captain retired uh, several weeks ago. Uh, we are putting that process in, uh, going to have uh, interviews, uh, testing on that, and hopefully uh, once that position is made, it will actually open. Uh, extra deputies position that we can fill so we're looking forward to this uh, we're pretty much at the number we usually have so we're going to be able to add officers to the street possibly investigations just to help us out you know dealing with incidents that occur in the community and that's a major plus what else is new at the sheriff's department sheriff I'm sorry what else is new at the sheriff's department sheriff well uh, we had a meeting Thursday I don't know if we talked about that yet on with the DLZ yeah. architectural firm. You did hit with that. Yeah. Uh, what about the judges? You know. Yeah. So at this meeting, it was as uh, Josh, had, I'm sure, said. It's a matter of we sat down and we were given a schematic sheet, uh, which outlines every office that you could conceivably think of in the sheriff's department. Uh, pick and choose what you want. What do you need? Uh, what are the size of the rooms, that type of thing. Uh, but also present at that meeting were uh, Judge uh, Moult and uh, Magistrate Judge Jacobs. Uh, and they wanted to discuss uh, the possibility uh, of adding a courtroom at the jail uh, to facilitate 
all, all kinds of different leads. Initially, uh, we had sat down and talked about having initial hearings there, trying to streamline the system a little bit of us having to move people up and down off the hilltop down to the courthouse. Um, so that's that's something else that we have sat down and spoke about. We've also sat down, myself, jail commander, um, with with uh, the judges and just talk about the whole scheme of how right now to support to s protect this community from lawsuits how we're moving inmates around uh, to minimize the amount of people in the jail uh, as I've talked about before uh, but um, the transportation part of it is something that we really have to get down uh, to get people to and from courts because you may want seven different individuals who have a court hearing coming up and I may have them in three different jails so we have to go back and try to work out some kind of program uh, some other things that can come up I know it's my this happened last time didn't it my phone went off <laughs> I think so, that's okay <laughs> I want so so we're in the process we're in the process of trying to work that out and uh, uh, but everything's going it seems to be pretty well pretty well that's good no, like we said it's a um, it is a process that you know it requires a lot of input from a lot of different facets of the community um, so have, having law and having order uh, communicating on this is obviously important and it's certainly a thing that you know we want to have it addressed before the facility is built rather than after the facility is built correct correct uh, to cut down a little bit of the mayhem that can occur uh, it's it's just uh, we have we have I mean right now it's just, we have an absolutely great uh, st uh, staff of deputies and, and we have a great amount of people in the jail uh, and it's uh, it's something that I think in the future is we're gonna we're gonna get this place running really efficient and uh, and have a little more room I hope Sheriff, we were talking to, uh, in the break about a, a couple other uh, things that going on with the department. Uh, one of those is a, you said it's a training coming up for your department here soon? Well, what, what uh, I think that'll be addressed by Josh. Um, he kind of oversees all that. Uh, one of the things coming up this week, or uh, he and I are going to go to the state house uh, to uh, speak with legislators and uh, uh, senators about uh, a mental health issue that seems to be not only in the state of Indiana but across the United States uh, personally I can tell you that we have several who come across in our jail uh, and it can be quite a process to get uh, people to the right uh, places to, to be interviewed or, or uh, talk with professionals to help them with their problems uh, we do have I mean we have some individuals that it's just a constant they get arrested they do their time they go back out <coughs> and within days they're back you know and it's just a revolving process within our jail and that's become uh, an incident our situation rather uh, that's occurring throughout Indiana so the sheriff's association is uh, asked all the sheriffs in the state to come together uh, and speak with legislators and senators uh, about needing legislation that can help remedy this problem so we'll be going up there uh, on thursday and uh, hopefully it's going to start a process that we can uh, alleviate not only the problem of being in a location that they really don't need but to help get them to the places they need to place to be rather to get the proper uh, psychological or uh, mental uh, doctoring I guess or however you want to call it sure uh, to help these people out and get them in the right places because they don't they really don't believe belong in our jails they belong in a facility that's going to assist them in be uh, being able to come back into our communities and be a member of the community that provides positive situations it's it might be a little idealistic with a take like this but i know that ultimately it is the goal um you know when somebody goes into incarceration you know punishment is obviously the reason for it but the idea is not the idea i think is ultimately to help the person to yes. get the person back on the right path rather yes. than just to you know 
Yeah, it, throw them it, behind the bars. It doesn't do anyone in the, in our community any positive. Uh, it doesn't turn into a positive situation when they're in a location that they they really don't need to be in, and and we need to find a process that's a little bit simpler, a little bit quicker to get them to the type of facility they need so they can come back and be a positive part of our community. You know, it, uh, jail's not the answer for them, um, you know, because they, they just really don't know what they're doing. Uh, so hopefully this will be a start uh, and we can move forward on this uh, legislation, I hope. No, good to get this conversation started. Yeah, it's one of those where they defunded uh, mental health, the state hospitals, and the individuals that would have been residents there when they defunded them and closed the doors. They've come out into the general public, and the bounds or the setups of what would they would do now they're committing a crime that isn't with the social norms and landing into the jail and with those that's where we're seeing the problem and again it all comes back to funding or defunding of different programs that are there uh, we've looked into the different options or how to treat those uh, officer um, training for jail staff and also for our road officers uh, whichever agency it is but the CIT training the crisis intervention training uh, explains or points out different ways to handle individuals because uh, somebody that may have a space issue where we come up there and we're trying to talk to them or redirect them to an area or even place them under arrest and handcuffs um, by doing that we invade their bubble the individual may not understand what's going on but to uh, show us how to recognize those signs and symptoms earlier that it may be a mental health issue instead of a drug impairment issue or it could be medical just like with a uh, DUI we'll go and use that as an example uh, responding officers are trying to figure out if a person's impaired because of an intoxicant or if it's a medical imbalance uh, because they could have bumped their head in the accident and they're staggering around do they have a concussion or are they impaired on drugs um, so it's allowing the officers to go and see different ways to screen and say this is the problem let's go this direction instead of just a catch-all take everybody and throw them in a lockdown room certainly and since it's a uh it's a matter that involves funding. Have to start with the top and uh, head to the state house. And definitely uh, wish you guys best of luck as you uh, take on that endeavor. Yes, thank you. So then, I know we meant, and then uh, kind of going off of that um, training for officers. That was another thing that we were going to uh, discuss. Well, that was part of it. Was the CIT training aspect? Right. Um, Ken Jasper, the jail commander, he's stating that uh, with the more presence or what we see inside our facility in the jail, that he plans on instituting a training just not to one or two people that work each shift. He's wanting to go and bring that in and in 2020 do the full-blown uh, training course. It's several days, but for the entire staff there, so each and every person has that tool in the tool bag as opposed to trying to go and call in one person on the shift and say okay this person deals with the mentally ill or the screening process with it uh, he said that it would just benefit everybody if they had that and so we're not just relying on one individual because they may call in sick they may end up having another task they may be another um, <clears throat> link in the chain going on uh, he wants to pre present and provide that training to everybody there so everybody has the ability to recognize I think that's very important yes and, 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 and just to add to that Major Jasper uh, since he's been appointed jail commander has come in uh, and really intensified and increased the training of our jail staff uh, it's a big part of what he believes should happen. It's a big part of what I believe and what Josh believes should happen. And uh, he's really stepping up. And uh, our jail staff is young. But I would say that uh, by the time uh, a little more training is done, I, I, I would match our jail staff against any jail staff in the state, uh, which I would also do for our deputies. I mean, I, I really think this community is very fortunate I as sheriff and very fortunate to have the people working for me that's working for me and uh, we're here to provide the best service we can for Jefferson County as we come up on the end of the program is there anything else you guys would like to add 
Well, again, it's still winter, <laughs> so I'm going to add in there, uh, please, when you travel, uh, be prepared for the winter. Uh, have coats, extra coats, blankets, food, water, everything that in case you get stranded, it makes it possible uh, for you to be as comfortable as you can until someone comes upon you to help. Uh, let's remember to keep our chimneys clean. Uh, you know, just look for any anything out there that could cause uh, some kind of fire in your house, and uh, hopefully we'll... Uh, make summer here pretty soon. I just want to say thank you to those tuning in and listening and watching on uh, the video rebroadcast of this. Uh, we just appreciate as the support that you give to our local law enforcement and law enforcement in general. Uh, it's one of these jobs that it's a calling for our guys that are out here to do the work and taking the time to let them know they're appreciated and what they do is not for a loss. Um, there's been a lot of critical incidents that the officers in our area have been involved in in 2020 already. Uh, it takes a toll on the individuals, whether it's in their personal life or in their professional life. Things are always happening, um, and our officers are human just as much as the public listening here, so we're all in this battle of living life together, and uh, just the continued support for law enforcement is uh, greatly appreciated by all law enforcement here. Well, we definitely appreciate the effort of all of our area law enforcement. Um, personnel, and we definitely uh, appreciate the two of you guys for coming on the program today. So thank you so much for stopping by. Thank you for thank having you. us. And that is Jefferson County Sheriff Dave Thomas and Chief Deputy Josh Taylor. He Down here, we like good coffee that's freshly brewed and breakfast that suits your fancy, like a sausage biscuit with egg or sausage gravy and biscuit, now just two bucks each. McDonald's, Southern-inspired, Southern-approved. Ba-da-ba-ba-ba! -ba -ba.